We've talked about threaded fasteners. There are a whole bunch of kinds of fasteners that do not use threads, as you, as you know. And once again, I urge you to look favorably upon Machinery's Handbook, which has every number and dimension you could possibly want related to almost every kind of fastener. So at some point in your career, I hope you can get one of these. Um, also, there are manufacturers' websites. Uh, a favorite one of mine is McMaster Car. Granger is another one. And they will have all kinds of information. So let's start with washers. Um, and the very simplest kind of washer is just a flat piece of metal with a, a shape like a circle. Uh, a plain washer. Washers um, can do a bunch of tasks for you. They can distribute the load over a bigger area, kind of like using snowshoes. If you have an oversized hole, it can fill in the space there. If you have something with a finish on it, like painted or powder coated, the washer can protect the finish. Sometimes we can use them as a locking device if we use uh, one of these lock washers or a toothed washer. And they can be used also uh, in electrical situations. You don't always need a washer. Sometimes you like to use them. Machinery's Handbook has tables that give you the sizes of various kinds of washers. So this one when we're reading a table, we want to slow down. First look at the heading. So this is about standard plain washers, type A. We don't know yet what type A is, but that's OK. We might want to look at the material down here in the footer to see if there's anything in there we need to know about. And then we notice, OK, Along the side, it gives the nominal size. So if you had a half inch bolt, you would choose a half inch washer. And then we notice, oh, they come in narrow and wide. So that's something else to look for. Here's a close up of part of the that table we just looked at. So let's say we have a half inch bolt and we're looking for a half inch washer. And let's say uh, we don't need a great big washer, we want a narrow washer. So let's find the half inch size. And half inch means this goes with a half inch bolt. And let's look at the line that goes with the narrow washer. All right, so there's that. Then let's say we want to look at what size is the hole inside the washer. That is the inside diameter. So the inside diameter looks like 5, 531. It's a 32nd of an inch bigger than the half inch bolt. What about the outside diameter? It is an inch and a 16th. OK. What about the thickness? How thick is it? The basic thickness is um, a little over 3 seconds, but it can range from these tolerances. And you might want to know how thick the washer is if you're figuring out, OK, how long a bolt do I need to go through this stuff if I'm using washers and nuts. Type B washers we will not dig into too much, but they have closer tolerances than the, the type A. The type, type A is your good old I call it garden variety, hardware store. Uh, most of our washers that we use will be type A. I just give you this for thoroughness. Let's think about lock washers. So a lock washer is really just one turn of a spring. And because it's a spring, part of a spring, the two ends of that cutoff piece stick out. And when you clamp it down, um, those those um, ends of the spring press against the stuff that you're clamping it with and um, hold the thing in place. So let's say you want to know how thick your lock washer is. You have to look at the picture at the top. All right, which one is talking about thickness? 
Aha! There it is right there. T for thickness. Yes, it does give us the small end and the big end, but let's look at T for thickness. And, aha, here is a column, T for thickness. So now we could just pick out what is our washer size. Like if we're using a half inch bolt, there's our half inch bolt thing. And we'll come over here and find out, aha, a half inch lock washer is going to be an eighth of an inch thick. I like to take a piece of paper and put it under the line that I'm trying to read so I block out the other numbers that are going to confuse me. Then here are um, tooth washers. Some people call these star washers. We talked about keys earlier in the term, so I'll zoom on past this one. And then pins. Pins come in various shapes. Dowel pins are perhaps the most common of the machined pins. They're, they're a straight, uh, precise, hardened pin, and they are pressed into mating holes in two parts. And notice that it says uh, one of the parts, the, the bottom part, is a force fit, so an interference fit. And uh, if you are thinking about using a particular size of pin, here's the size of pin here. If you want to know what diameter hole you should use, look, here's a column that says suggested hole diameter, maximum and minimum. Another kind of pin that you'll run into is called a spring pin. Some people call these roll pins. Roll because they're rolled up. Um, how they work is this thing is some springy steel. It's rolled up into a circle with a gap in it. And this pin is bigger than the hole you put it into. I've seen them used to hold uh, wood store fixtures together, for example. So you make a hole. Oops, I thought I had another slide, but I don't. You make a hole, and here's the column that says recommended hole size. If you look up a, a pin that you're interested in, you'll notice that the size of the pin, the pin diameter, is bigger than the size of the hole you're supposed to drive it into. And again, you might want to use the trick of just getting a piece of plain white paper and if you are looking at a particular size of pin just lay your piece of the edge of your white paper across right under that line and block out all the numbers you don't want to see. I find that quite helpful and then I can run my eye along the edge of the paper and find the number more easily. Now another kind of pin that you'll run into is a clevis pin. And a clevis is one of these, um, I don't know the words to use, it has two sides. It's like a U-shaped arm. And then you uh, put a pin, called a clevis pin, through the holes in the thing. Then at the end of the clevis pin is another hole and you put a small pin in there called a cotter pin. You will see these clevises used to attach hydraulic cylinders, um, equipment on oh, like tractors or loaders or excavators. Uh, you'll see clevises used in cranes for attaching a hook. And again, notice there is the clevis and there is the cotter pin that goes through the hole in the clevis pin. Here are the tables from Machinery's Handbook that have at the bottom what size is the clevis pin and at the top what size is the cotter pin. And I should mention that I've given you a handout that has all of these pages we've been talking about in your handout so you can look up any of these that you want. Let's say we have a clevis where outside to outside we want it to be one inch. 
So first, let's figure out what size clevis pin we need. Well, looking at the picture, we need that hole for the cotter pin to be outside of the one inch clevis, don't we? So this distance h from the underside of the pin to the hole has to be more than one inch or we won't be able to get our cotter pin through the little hole. So let's look and see which one of these pins has an H distance greater than one inch. And we see, aha, there's an H distance bigger than one inch. Looks like it's a 7 16 inch clevis pin. Now, what size of cotter pin should we put in our bill of material? Well, according to this, we need a 3 seconds cotter pin. And here's our table for cotter pins. So if we wanted to look up what size of stuff do we need, there it is. We need a hole that's, of course, the clevis pin will come with a hole, so we don't need to worry about that. What if we had a clevis that was two inches outside to outside? We need an H distance that's bigger than two inches, don't we? So we're looking in this column here under H, the distance from the head to the hole, and the first one we come to that's bigger than two inches is the very bottom one. So looks like we're going to need a big old one inch clevis pin. Now, what size cotter pin will we need for that? Well, reading across the table, that cotter pin will be 5 30 seconds. And so if we wanted to know its dimensions, here's our cotter pin table. And a 5 30 seconds cotter pin goes through a hole that's 0.172. Final kind of fastener we'll talk about is the retaining ring. And retaining rings can go outside of a shaft, an external ring, or inside a shaft, an internal ring. And notice that they have special uh, retaining ring pliers for installing those little springy things. Well, this is a good design solution, uh, a more elegant solution than, say, uh, 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 let's back up. If you have a shaft going through a hole and you want to keep the shaft from sliding out, uh, an old clunky way might have been, okay, I'll put a washer over there and then I'll drill a hole through the shaft and I'll put a cotter pin and that'll hold that thing in there. Well, a more elegant solution is to machine a groove in that shaft and put a retaining ring around there. And here in the upper right is a picture of a shaft with a groove. I just want to point out on this table, what I'm trying to show you with these arrows is that this is a big old long table. Here are some sizes of shaft diameter. And when you get to the bottom, if you have a bigger shaft diameter, you go over to the next column and keep reading. So they go from a little tiny 1 8 inch shaft down, 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 over to the next side, all the way to a 7 and a half inch shaft. <laughs> So let's say you have a one inch diameter shaft. So there's the one inch diameter. Looking at the picture up here, we see what dimensions we can look up. There's G, the diameter of the groove. There's W, the width of the groove. And there's E, how far it should be from the groove to the end of the shaft. And we can do the same thing for internal retaining rings. And here was an old clunky design, by the way. Here's a new design with an internal retaining ring. And so what we do here is we machine a groove inside the hub or whatever it is. And then we put an internal retaining ring in there. And again, here's the picture for looking up how to find the dimensions you're after.